According to John Ruskin, the leading principles of architecture are the lamps of sacrifice, truth, power, beauty, life, memory, and obedience. We have already covered the lamps of sacrifice and the lamps of truth in our previous video, so make sure to check it out, link is in the description. Today, we will be investigating the lamps of power and the lamps of beauty. Before we begin, we would like to thank Ni Su Tsuong for this summary. She is the founder of The Vomitorium, a highly engaging blog where she discusses various architectural topics. We will have her links down in the description. Make sure to subscribe and give this video a like to not miss out on any of our future readings. And now, what is The Lamps of Power? In reverting to the memories of those works by architecture, by which we have been most pleasurably impressed, it will generally happen that they fall into two broad classes, one that is characterized by an exceeding preciousness and delicacy, and the other by a severe mysterious majesty, which we remember with undiminished awe. Now, the difference between these two orders of building is not merely that which there is nature between things beautiful and sublime. All buildings show man either as gathering or governing, and the secrets of his success are knowing what to gather and how to rule. These are the two great intellectual lamps of architecture, the one consisting in a just and a humble veneration for the works of God upon the earth, and the other in an understanding of the dominion over those works which has been vested in man. Besides the expression of living authority and power, there is however a sympathy. A sympathy in the forms of noble building, with what is most sublime in natural things, and it is governing power directed by the sympathy, abandoning all inquiry into the more abstract fields of invention. The second lamp we will be discussing today is the lamp of beauty. It was stated that the value of architecture depended on two distinct characters, the impression it receives from human power and the image it bears of the natural creation. I have endeavored to show in what matter its majesty was attributable to a sympathy with the effort and trouble of a human life. I desire now to trace that happier element of its excellence, consisting in a noble rendering of image of beauty, derived chiefly from the external appearances of organic nature. It will be thought that I have somewhat rashly limited the elements of architectural beauty to imitative forms. I do not mean to assert that every happy arrangement of line are adaptations of those which are commonest in the external creation. That, as a type and help, must be closely attempted and more clearly seen, and that beyond a certain point, man cannot advance in the invention of beauty without directly intimating natural form. Now that we have reached the end of our reading, please let us know in the comments which lamp out of these two is the most precious to you. And make sure to subscribe because we will be releasing the third part of this video next week where we will be discussing the remaining three lamps of architecture, life, memory, and obedience. Thank you for making it to the end of this video and we will see you in the next one.